everybody. Welcome back to another episode of FSI DFS Fantasy NASCAR Picks. I'm your host, Meg Rue 31. Uh, before we get going here, just a quick advertisement. Lots of cool things going on on the FSI DFS uh, YouTube channel. So please subscribe if you haven't already. And you'll know when things are coming out. We have NHL Hockey. It's been going really well. McKinley has got some great plays, um, got some great interaction, great viewership for that. So uh, Monday through Friday, those run. Uh, doing NFL football. I just did the week seven recap and posted it before I did this video. And then we also um, usually have Monday and Thursday night football coverage too. PGA and NBA is coming up. We'll see what we're going to do about that. But um, pay attention to our X slash Twitter account uh, for an announcement for NBA coming soon, of what we're going to do for that this season. So um, NASCAR, uh, we've got, um, well, thank you for staying with us this far into the season. I know football's kind of taken over and other fall things, but uh, exciting. We have three races left and uh, before the championship. So this one, Martinsville next week, and then Phoenix in the finale. So uh, Kyle Larson won at Vegas last week, so he is locked into the championship four. The rest is pretty wide open, so I just have to play after drivers in green. They might be uh, playing for stage points, but at this point, I think they're just going to try to do as the best they can, and it becomes more imperative. It's pretty close together, so I didn't even differentiate the color coding. Uh, I think Busher is the furthest one out, and he's like 23 back, so it, it's not... Um, anything like really huge anybody who has a bad day could fall anybody who has a good day could move up it could move all around so next week we'll have a clear picture and then i'll uh, make sure that for martinsville that we talk about that so this is miami homestead it is a high tire wear track if you didn't watch my other two videos which um is comparable to old atlanta before the repave a couple years ago it's also comparable to darlington and to auto club which they ran um for the last time this season before they reconfigure that into i believe a short track there's whatever they're going to do with that so um and with tire wear it, it does some really uh you interesting things with the field here so first of all if you're not good at it like long run speed is, is very important i don't have any practice data here or long run speed because they practice at like nine in the morning and they had two groups and obviously it got warmer quicker so group b obviously had advantage the times are being skewed and the practice time is not going to really mean anything because they're practicing at like nine and ten in the morning compared to when they're going to be running the race this afternoon so the conditions weren't favorable. I don't think it really told us. Like I'll call, I'll let you know. Like if anything really applied, but I, I think we look at people. We want look for some places. So we're probably looking at with 267 laps to. Well, we saw Larson pretty much dominate the whole race a couple times here, um, but probably looking at one or two dominators, maybe three. But fast laps get all funky because with the tire wear, say. Um, Brian Priest has a flat tire in the middle of a green flag run. He goes in pits, gets fresh tires. He's going to run 10, 15 fastest laps because he's got the fresher tires. So he's going to be able to, like, the fall off is just incredible here. So it just it shoes these tires up and they don't have grip and they just don't have as much speed. So uh, pit strategy is going to come into to play here and, and a lot of different things that so I think it goes mostly to those who manage these tires well. So start up at the top, Martin Truex Jr. I have him as a prime play. I think he's to be highly owned, does really well here. I uh, looked really well in practice and qualifying. And uh, I just think he's just someplace where you want to start your lineup. I think he's just definitely, um, I know it's risky starting at number one, but I think he can go out there and dominate early and um, get enough points. And even if he doesn't finish first, I think if he still finishes like with the top five, those early dominator points will be enough to pay off his salary. Bubba Wallace, I think will have a, a decent day. I just... He's okay on tire wear tracks, um, not like elite or anything, not horrible, There's somewhere in between. So I think he's a, a GPP play here. Um, good play on FanDuel, but um, for, for DK, um, Star Second, not interested. Tyler Reddick, I think, is a great GPP also. Uh, if you want to um, take a shot, he's decent on tire wear tracks as long as he doesn't get too close to the wall because uh, he likes to ride high. He should be fine. Uh, I think he'll um, have some high ownership because I think people remember how well he used to run in um, when he was with Richard Childress racing. 
um and he used to they they for some reason really have these tire wear tracks figured out um so i, I don't know if it'll translate still in the to his current 2311 car but uh, toyotas have looked good and have looked fast and i think there's a lot of upside to play him in gpp uh brad kazowski he is the best looking forward here he's good at these tire wear tracks um look like he just came set up with a bunch of speed i know he's not in the playoffs i know most of the resources from the team are probably going to bush to help try to push him into the final four but i think that he just um like you really like what are you going to do for like testing for next year uh, at this track because you're only going to come back to it once like towards the end so uh, and things could change with the car you have like whole season ahead of you um you know auto club's not on there darlington still is maybe they're Maybe there's a couple other tracks that I haven't like really looked and and studied anything new out there that might be high tire wear tracks. So I, I think Rad's out there just to kind of win this race and and he looked good in practice and qualifying. And I think I definitely feel comfortable playing him in cash. Kyle Larson is probably going to be the highest owned one here and and probably the lock of the slate. People just saw how much he he's just in great form. Ran really well last week. He does well on tire wear tracks. He has dominated um races like this before on tire wear tracks and as long as he doesn't have any issues like all the flat tires in xfinity which is just absolutely tilting my lineup was crushing until um we had those issues but it's a different tire here and hopefully it will hold up and be fine and i think carl larson has a really great chance to um get up there after truex lead a lot of laps dominate and potentially win this race again uh austin dillon uh Punching above his weight class, I think, here. Uh, again, I think it's just Richard Childry Racing really understand these tire wear tracks, and um, they put a really good qualifying lap down. They looked good in practice. So, and uh, I think he actually practiced maybe in the slower group and, and looked really good in it still. So uh, I think he's a GPP here. Very interesting. Like I said, Richard Childred Racing really understands. Uh, there's just some organizations that understand tracks better than others, and this is one of them, and it doesn't matter kind of who the driver is. I know I have been pretty much fade Austin Dillon most of the season, but I think right here this could be a potential spot to play him. Love him on FanDuel. Absolute cash play on FanDuel. Here, a GPP play just to keep in consideration. William Byron, I think if – um. I mean, it's hard to fit Byron in with Larson and Truex, but if you want to pivot off of one of them in cash, if like maybe Truex, if you don't think he's going to dominate enough up there early and that the potential of him in the first position to lose place differential points with Byron having potential to pick up place differential points, then I completely can see that if you can find the $500 extra, I think it's very hard to play Truex, Larson and Byron in the same lineup. I mean, you might be able to play it, but you're going to be playing a lot of guys um, in the 5k range, which I mean, might work out. Well, who knows? But um I, I think I definitely like him in cash. Ross Chastain is a GPP to fade. Like, like this team is just, I can't even say they took a step backwards. They drove like miles backwards. It seems this, this season haven't had the speed. I just don't know what's, um, what's going on with them. So I, I don't, he's not really great on, on tire wear tracks. Like, Obviously, he did something right to qualify in the top 10 here, but just not not a huge fan this week. So GPP to fade. Ty Gibbs, same thing. I just don't think he's had enough experience on these tire wear tracks to like he's he's had a really good tail in this season. I think his first win is um is definitely coming next year. And I think he'll definitely make the playoffs next year. I, I think he's come a long ways. I think we haven't heard like him wrecking or getting into like fights with people as much he's kind of gone under the radar now and i think he's a very smart kid i don't think he's like one of these legacies that just have a silver spoon in their mouth um born with it so i think he's going to be solid and but this just isn't the week here uh blaney did not have great practice speeds, but had phenomenal long run speeds. And for Ford, like they just don't have the speed, but I think he does well managing his tire wear. I think he'll be highly owned. And I think he he's a solid cash play also. 
And um, he can maybe probably fit in with Larson and Truex with some of the other value plays um, in, in your cash line if you want to go that way. Hamlin's a GPP. I think that he he never qualifies well, but he always does well in the race. Could he get up there and dominate this this race, lead laps and stuff? Has he been good on tire wear tracks? Yes and yes. Uh, has he had issues during the course of the season too here and there? Yes and yes. So uh, that's why he's got to be a GPP here. But if um, probably a great pivot off of Larson in tournaments, uh, if you just want to swap him out or if you wanted to, you know, go with um, even like a, a Toyota build down here with like Bell, Hamlin, and and maybe Truex or, or something like that um, could be quite interesting. Alex Bowman has just has had a very vanilla season. Like that, that's just his mode. He just he's just there and he he comes to the racetrack and he he practices good he qualifies decent usually and then like you're looking through the race recap towards like 20 laps ago and you're like oh, wow alex bowman's like in fourth place like where like he's probably not going to lead laps um you know really ever since he had that like injury just hasn't been this I don't know if he's like more timid or if he's physically injured and like still like hurts to drive the car or or, or what's going on, but it just hasn't hasn't been as sharp as he was last year as like kind of the guy lurking in the background and then all of a sudden out of nowhere he's like winning races or um you know finishing in like the top five. So uh, I think he's okay here. GPP for me. Um I uh, can't play him in cash. Christopher Bell, I just, he didn't look great in practice and qualifying, but it was surprising because he's had like so many straight poles. So that's a little bit concerning, but we've seen him like fall every time. So maybe this is the opposite. Maybe he, he doesn't qualify well. And this is the week that he does put things together, but a uh, GPP to figure it, find out. I'm not um, putting my cash lineup. Swears and McDowell starting too far forward. They're not great at these tracks. Really don't have a ton of speed, and I think they're they're just going down, down, down. Chase Elliott, uh, I totally would put him in a cash here, but I think he's more of a GPP. He's not in the playoffs, so I think a lot of the resources are probably going towards Byron and Larson, even though Larson's already locked in, so he doesn't really need – he's playing with house money here, so probably Byron gets all the resources from Hendrick because they really need to try to get him into the Final Four. But Elliott has run well in these tracks. There's like some decent place differential here. So um, definitely going to play him in some tournaments. Chris Buescher, uh, he has like got him and dominated and led these at this race um, before. But that was when it was like in the winter time, like when they ran it twice, not winter time. Yeah, early on in the season. I think it was like two years ago. Like he was up there and like out front and he, he just it didn't have the, the speed like like brad did but you got to think that what brad had they, the team's got to share with him and and try to help him figure it out because it, they really need that to, to happen for him to be able to advance in the playoffs so i'm uh, looking forward to uh playing him in some cash games i don't know if it would be my primary cash but i definitely like him i also like kyle bush again rcr car same thing with dawson dillon same thing we said with tyler reddick they just figure out kyle bush has done well at this track before he's done well at darlington so i, I think that he's good at tire wear if he can not wreck the car i i think this is a, a great spot for him in the playoffs to to make a charge to be able to um he started off the season really strong and then i think this is the point where he starts to put it back together again and, and gain momentum to make it into the final four so I, I definitely like him and cash i love the place differential here and i i think that he has the potential to um be able to get up there and maybe even to lead some laps so um really like kyle bush here eric jones uh these legacy cars have just been Bad, not good on tire wear tracks, so GPP to fade. Corey LaJoy starting too far forward. This is not his track style, so a fade. Briscoe, the Fords have just been bad here, so GPP to fade. K 
Kevin Harvick, this is such a special story. I watched the video of them surprising him with this Bud, this iconic Budweiser car they created for him. They named the race after him. He's on the cover. I, I just think, I don't think he can win this race, but he's been really good on tire wear tracks. He used to dominate the old Atlanta track with, um, with tire wear. So 22nd, like he didn't look great in practice and qualifying. But I think something magical is going to happen here. He's going to have a solid day. I don't think he's going to win the race, but I think he can get up into the top 10. So definitely like him in cash. And I think he'll be very popular just based on the narrative. So that's why I have him with a chalk tag there. Stenhouse um, is decent at these types of tracks. Uh, has actually rounded out to become a, a solid race car driver. Not, not a superstar by any means, but someone that can go out there and get the job done week after week. He's like a kind of a blue collar guy, kind of like um, Josh Williams is in um, the Xfinity series. So and ju just someone that I think that's more reliable at this point in his career than he was volatile, what we used to call him Recky Spinhouse. Um, so kudos to him for figuring things out. John Hunter Nemechek, we don't understand like why he's running in this race, like why he's running in a Chevy, you know, like he's such uh, with such strong ties to Toyota through the truck racing and through Xfinity. I just don't get it. Um, don't expect him to do well here. I mean, he did okay, uh, obviously in the Xfinity race, but um, I don't think that you can. I don't think it's going to translate here. Like sometimes we say, like, did a really good job um, in, in Xfinity and had an experience out here, but it's a completely different car. Uh, yes, he finished third and he qualified second, but it's I just a fade here. I, I just don't think that he's going to be as good as Carson Hosevar has been. And, and, and I just kind of wish Hosevar was the one that had the opportunity here over John Hunter Nemechek. But um, don't know. Maybe they you know, want him to get some experience here because he's going to be in this car uh, on this track for, for next year, even though it's going to be a different manufacturer. Um, so that's that. AJ Elmendinger on Gapu's prime play. He did so well here last year. Uh, I know he's not really racing for anything here, but he seems to understand these tire wear tracks also. And maybe that comes down to his like road racing experience, uh, but I don't know. Um, I just feel like he's got a, such a solid floor for a cash. I, I don't think he's going to be super popular here, but just from what I saw last year and um, he, he didn't, um, he's been good on other tire wear tracks too. I forget where he finished in Darlington. Let's see, Darlington, AJ Allmendinger. Um, he finished 13th. He started 16th. So, or actually, he qualified 24th. No, he started 16th. So, yeah, 24 points. So, you know, a top 15 finish there. Uh, starting 25th, that's 10 place differential points. I'll take it at 7K. Um, really like that play. He's not getting up there and lead laps and stuff, but I, I think he'll have a solid day. Cindric, uh, GPP, again, I'm not super high on the forwards. Justin Haley, I've been playing a lot recently, but I just don't think this is a track style for him. Harrison Burton, I usually fade, but this is probably one of the best track styles for him. Uh, when he was in Xfinity, he was really good at these tire wear tracks, at Atlanta and Darlington. So um, I, I think you can definitely consider him. Let's see where he finished at Darlington. Uh, he was in an accident. He finished 35th. Go figure. <laughs> typical Harrison Burton. So that's why I have a GPP. I can't put a cash tag on him, but uh, I'll let you see if you want to try to take that risk or not. Ryan Priest, I think will be okay. Again, the forward's not super interested in. Eric Almarola has looked good on tire wear tracks and, and been okay. He finished 14th um, in, in Darlington. So uh, another one to to consider in um the cheaper range. I'd, I'd pay the 100 more for Almendinger, but if you need another guy down here and you're in that range, then I think he's fine. Todd Gillian, I think if you're looking for some punts, he was in the truck races. He was always good on these high tire wear tracks, uh, definitely. And he's back in like his normal car this week. So watch, let me look up, and he probably wrecked in, in Darlington also. Uh, no, he started uh, 30th. He finished 26th, so you know, not – a ton but there's some floor there so a little bit of place differential so not uh too bad 
Uh, JJ Yaley, not interested in the Rick Ware car, probably going backwards. Ty Dillon uh, started 26th, finished 29th. So, again, there's a little bit of um, upside there also. Um, another punt play down here, especially if you're trying to get like three of those 10 K plus guys in your lineup. Ryan Newman has always been good at tire wear tracks. Very, very good. Although this car isn't. So, I mean, he's definitely going to be saving his tires if he's sitting in the garage with his hood up. So uh, it's just a matter of can this Rick Ware car make it through the, to the end of the race. Um, so in GPP, I think he's definitely worth the risk, but I can't play him in cash. He did make it to the end of the race. Um, in Darlington, same car, started 35th, made it up to 27th. So there's eight place differential points there at 5,400. It's not bad. Uh, Josh Balicki is a fade. And Joey Logano, I think this is probably going to be the second highest owned driver <clears throat> behind Larson because he wrecked his car in um, qualifying or practice one of the two. Has to go to a backup car. He's been okay on tire wear tracks, but the Fords have been slow. It's a backup car. And... I don't know. I can't put him as a prime play as, and and I know some people do have him out there in the industry as like a lock, but I just don't trust it because I'd rather play Brad Keselowski for like $200 less who could possibly lead laps and finish in the top five. If Logano like makes it 10 place differential points up to like 25th, like I just really don't know if that's enough um, floor for me. Uh, to play him uh, or to make him like a, a prime building block in my lineup. So I put a cash tag on him. I'll let you uh, figure out if you want to play him or not. Um, it, it's up to you. I'm not saying it's a fade. I'm not saying it's a bad play. I'm just saying that I can see a potential path for it not working out. So I'm not going to, I'm going to be underweight on, on him. That's what I'm, I'm saying to you. I will play Logano. I'm not fading Logano, but he's not in my primary cash. And I think this is another week where I'm probably going to split cash and I'll probably put 50% on a Logano line and 50% not just to hedge because I just don't feel great about it. So that's what I got for you. Appreciate you still watching this time. So, um, you know, if, you felt by watching this far. If you want to help us a little bit more, please like the video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. More than half of you viewers don't haven't, so please do. We're trying to get to 5,000 viewers. We've just crossed the 4,500 threshold, and we're heading up to 4,600. So, um, you know, please be part of this community. We really would, um, if these videos help you, that would be a tremendous help to us. And also share with your friends. So if you have any questions, put them in the chat below and um, or hit me up at Twitter. Uh, slash x i still call it twitter because i think people understand it more than this is going to take a year or two before i can actually call it x i just i just can't do that i'm still in the nfl videos calling them the los angeles chargers or the san diego chargers when they're los angeles and the los angeles raiders when they're in las vegas so it's just like just um at least i figured out the guardian thing in baseball um just old habits die hard so but that's what i got for you so um good luck in your contests um this weekend uh you know how to get a hold of me if you have any questions. I just hope you have an amazing weekend. And just I hope this is a great race and not like a snooze fest where one person gets out of there and just absolutely dominates and wins by like 14 or 15 seconds. And, you know, a bunch of cars are not on the lead lap and it's just a, a frustrating mess. So um, last couple of weeks, I just looked for some good racing, some good competition, some good storylines coming out of it just to have an amazing, amazing final in two weeks in um, in Phoenix. So thanks for watching. Hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you next time.